BMW have been a powerhouse of ideas under their charismatic American designer boss, Chris Bangle. Here's one of his creations called the Z9 Gran Turismo. Using a refined V8 diesel, this was one of the first test beds for BMW's multi-controller knob, now seen in the new 7 Series cars. After all, why have lots of switches when one can control all? It's a whole philosophy of the car. Uh, drive absolute simplest, most intuitive way, way to handle all of those. We use a simple control device here to activate the car. Now the car knows that I'm here, it's alive, it's awake. And a single control knob here with push and turn function, very simple, and a north, south, east, west dividing function brings me through the whole menu from CD changing to radio stations to heaters to the navigation. At the same time, my eyes never have to come down here. They stay up on the road because the visual display is up high on the instrument panel. That separates the intuitive hand function, which are very simple, from the eye functions, which have to be connected to our driving experience. It's a whole new philosophy of ergonomics. That's not just making people conform to a machine. That's making the machine work like people really need to drive. Well, I wonder where this girl's going in the Z9 Gran Turismo concept. It looks like it's back to base at Munich. This really is a stunningly stylish tour that takes existing BMW designs and pushes them forward, as design guru Chris Bangle explains. The idea behind this was to use modern technology, all the modern elements that are the BMW today, from the new space frame chassis to this great VA diesel that we now have, and put them together into one concept that says, this is what we believe could be fantastic driving for you. The outside, of course, wonderful styling, an emotional aesthetic that takes what we know as BMW, the lines, the curves, the kidneys, and interprets them in a new feeling, but a feeling of dynamic. Not only that, but also an interior that gives me someone that feeling of, this is openness. I am now in control of a car, not because I'm confused and have to learn how to work the car, but rather the car responds exactly as I want to. So we asked Chris to talk us through the philosophy it's always hard to pick out a few highlights, a more concept that, that hangs together as well as this one. You, you kind of tend to fall in love with everything. But if I could, there's some interesting elements about it which show how the traditional BMW graphics, lines, forms, they can all be interpreted in a new way. And that's what keeps this mark always fresh. There really isn't any line on the car that you don't find on a normal BMW today. From the headlight form, to here, they owe something to the 3 Series, the first one to come out now with this sense of aggressive eye, um, to the hood form, the power dome that we call it, really sits on top of that powerful V8 diesel engine there. This is also lines we have today, but the first time we've run it all the way into the kidneys. The kidneys are a good example. In the past, we worried about it being taller or shorter or wider. But now we're thinking about the kidneys as a part of the design, the jewelry in and of themselves. Do all the lines play with the car right? And here you see how we even change the form of the, the blades in the kidneys to continue the power dome line from the very front of the car, clear up over the car in the eight pillars back into the tail of it. Now, are you beginning to understand how top car designers think? I'm sure I wouldn't notice the exact proportions of the blades within the famous kidney grills, but maybe subtle nuances like this do affect me subconsciously. The passion and attention to detail continues in the work Chris has done in the interior. The car starts its color on the outside, of course, with this beautiful ice blue, and that continues on the interior with high-tech materials that are covered the steering wheel and off the center console and the door. In the seat, the blue suddenly takes on a copper tone because it's got real copper fibers in it. And the floor area is a dark red tone from the leather. It's a parquet leather floor. And this whole combination of aluminum from the side pieces that we use also in the frame of the car, but here as a light color contrast, the copper and cloth of the blue in the interior, and this wonderfully rich leather of the floor. It's a beautiful combination of lightness, modernity, the sense of avant-garde living because you have really the best material. Of course, creating a concept car is only the beginning of the project. You've got to tell the world about it. So we tagged along with the media group who had to take the first pictures of Chris Bangle's new baby. 
While he stayed behind his base, fretting that the film crew would scratch it, we found a location so remote that we didn't even have a rig reference. Once the weather had been checked and the precious car taken carefully to our location, the long and tedious process was started in order to prepare the car and look its best for the lens. Just like a film star in the makeup chair for hours, this concept was polished, but strained and moved around while test shots were taken. No bit of gravel was left unturned that would appear in the final pictures. We were astonished with the level of detail taken, but it would be a disaster if the first press shots appeared as if they were snapped on an old Instamatic in a car park, wouldn't it? A whole day went past with endless shots being taken against the strange backlit scaffolding that had been chosen. I suppose they found it artistic to have ten dummies in shadows behind with one live model in front. At least the dummies weren't bored hanging around for hours and hours. But at last, the film seemed to be paid to the shoot, and we were lucky enough to be rewarded with a fantastic sunset so that different types of pictures could be taken. Finally, some shots on the moon were needed, so our German friends attempted some that are called tracking shots. Here, the photographer simply gets in the back of the car, fully harnessed, and chooses a suitable shutter speed in order to get the speed effect on the finished pictures. But don't try this at home, folks.